What's going on guys and welcome to the first episode of the script club. The script club will basically be like a book club except instead of books uh, we talk about scripts. Pretty simple. So how I want this to go is at the end of each of the script club videos I'm going to have a link to a PDF uh, for the script for the next video. And so then for those of you that want to enter into the discussion and talk about the script uh, you can read that script and then when the next video comes out for it we can talk about it in the comment sections and and go more in depth into it so starting off what i'm going to do is go through the 2019 oscar nominated screenplays for best screenplay so the first script up is adam mckay's vice so what i like about adam mckay and his writing style and his directing style is that for this film and for the big short he's had this sort of semi-documentary feel to the script. And so the scripts are sort of filled with these different, you know, cool little things, whether that be, you know, still images or freeze frames, narration, these sorts of things. And I think that's really interesting. I like how he handles and incorporates those sort of elements into his scripts. Another interesting thing about Adam McKay is his previous directing experience. He's done a lot of comedy work along with some documentary work. And so those influences definitely can be seen in this script right here. And you see comedic elements with this sort of documentary style, but it is all in narrative form. So right off the bat in this screenplay, when we come to the first, you know, four or so pages, we already get to see this uh, idea of how this story is going to be told and how this script is going to set the tone for what we should expect when reading this screenplay. Okay, so he's 21 here, and then we flip to 9-11-2001, where he is, you know, vice president and doing all these things while the planes are hitting buildings on September 11th. And so the script kind of shows us how it's gonna tell this story and how it's gonna jump and how it's gonna kind of switch timelines and do this sort of stuff. And then pretty quickly, we get into the narrator. So. This person is narrating the entirety of this script. Another thing that Adam McKay did in The Big Short, he has a narrator that is also a character in the story. So just like uh, the character that Ryan Gosling plays in The Big Short is narrating what happens, this character right here, the narrator, ends up entering the story a little later and is a character in the story. So one of the things that this script does that's really interesting is this stuff right here. So it adds these freeze frames and it adds, the, it adds these historical pictures and, and stuff like this to really make this feel more like a documentary because in a way it sort of is. And I think that's really interesting. Uh, and it's something that I don't see in that many uh, scripts or in films where they, they compile these elements of documentary style into this narrative form. I think it's what makes Adam McKay's writing and directing different than what you see a lot of the times in traditional films. It really gives him a specific style that I don't see very many other places. So another thing that the script does is it likes to jump around a lot. So it likes to go between different timelines and it's it's interesting that adam mckay chooses to do this so for example this scene right here is interior white house office 2003 and so this is a meeting that's happening in the white house and then this cuts to here or so the streets of milan where uh, the events of what's happening in this meeting are actually being played out so that's kind of one quick time jump into the future and then you have back to the meeting right here, interior to office 2003 morning and the blah, blah, blah. But then you go back right here to interior Cheney's living room, 1974. And you go back to the Nixon administration and here we see Nixon resigning. And so it's interesting that Adam McKay chooses to do these sort of jumps. Now he sort of sets this up in the very beginning of the film where we have uh, Dick Cheney as a 21 year old versus him on September 11th, 2001, and we sort of have this interplay there. But it's interesting that he continues to do this throughout the script. And I think this is something that's difficult to do well, um, because I think it's really easy for your audience to get lost or your reader to get lost in what's happening, especially if they don't have a very strong understanding of 
who the person is in real life. So it's interesting that he chooses to to do these time jumps. And I think it's more of a documentary thing to do. It's, it's more in that style because especially if it's an event that we understand, you know, I think a lot of Americans understand what happened, you know, in September 11, 2001, or at least I hope they do. And so we're able to jump to that event as an anchor for who this person is. And then we can kind of jump to other areas in the timeline to say, okay, here's where this person was back then. And here's kind of how they developed. And so it's interesting to see how Adam McKay plays with uh, the chronology, but at the same time, make sure that the audience doesn't get lost. And I think this is something that if you are trying to write is very difficult to do. And I think it's the way that you're able to do this a lot of times is taking sort of like your big step back and saying, okay, how am I going to interrelate these elements for this overall theme and this overall purpose? Because that's really, you know, what is going on here. He's trying to, Adam McKay, is trying to tell the story in a way that it gives the most emotional and historical impact to the audience. And so because that is the goal, he has decided to take this sort of documentary style of chopping up the timeline and putting different pieces in different spots to give us this rounded view of how Adam McKay sees Dick Cheney and what those events were. So I know I've talked a little bit about Adam McKay's documentary influences, but he also has comedy influences because he's made uh, multiple comedy movies like uh, The Other Guys and The Anchorman, or Anchorman, I forget which one it is. Um, so this script has a lot of comedy in it. It has a lot of like big scenes that take comedy moments and sort of almost pull themselves out of the narrative for a moment to make a joke. Like this sort of scene here is the narrative is talking about Dick Cheney's ability to make the most wild and extreme ideas sound measured and professional. And so, you know, and he makes this joke here, which is not, you know, actually what is being said, but it's a joke sort of saying what is possible in the narrator's view and Adam McKay's view of what Dick Cheney was able to convince people to do. And so there's a lot of moments in the script that do that sort of thing. I think a lot of times the comedy in the script really lands and really uh, hits well. But I think there's a few times where it doesn't. For example, one of the times that it does not land is this scene right here. Okay, so uh, this, is just, this is just a quick little moment. Uh, so it says, you know, Dick Cheney was a foot soldier in the power games of Washington, D.C., but with a unitary executive theory, he could become Galactus, devourer of planets, and then image of the supervillain Galactus. So Galactus is a Marvel supervillain, and it's just like a quick little moment, but I don't think it fit the tone of what the theme of the script was about. Like, I think this moment might have worked better in the big short because the characters their personalities and their sort of vibe might have fit better with that joke but i think to a certain extent i think your comedy should mirror elements of your main character's personality which is why i think this moment right here works a lot better for the script and this one does not work as well because this one feels more like what you might say of like Dick Cheney comedy and for how Adam McKay builds this character and sort of shows us who he is, this joke feels better and feels more natural, whereas this joke kind of feels forced. So then if we come down to page 48, way down here, this scene right here, is another scene that's a comedy scene that I don't think lands very well. So the narrator right here says, sadly, there's no real way to know exactly what was going on with the Cheneys in this history changing moment. We can't just snap into a Shakespearean solilo soliloquy that dramatizes every feeling and emotion. And then they go into a Shakespearean soliloquy here and his wife and Dick Cheney are speaking in Shakespearean soliloquy, which I think this scene is probably the worst of the script in my opinion because one is what happens right before this is this very important scene this is sort of right before 
he is you know deciding whether or not he's going to be vice president or run to be vice president with george w bush and so there's sort of a lot weighing on this moment on top of that adam mckay brings in these there this right here especially is this little uh, analogy or the with these teacups and saying there are certain moments that are so delicate, like a teacup and saucer, stacked on a teacup and saucer, stacked on a teacup and saucer. And they show this, the teacups wobbling as they're stacked higher and higher. And so this is the setup of this analogy for power that ends up coming back later on in the script. And so you have this sort of heavier moment that is broken by the Shakespearean soliloquy. Now, I think that Adam McKay might have been doing that on purpose to give the audience a break but at the same time i think it weakens the heaviness that is in this earlier scene because i and i think it's really important because this is a major turning point of what happens in the story and so to go from this major turning point to this elongated joke i felt like really didn't work and in the theater it really didn't work for me like i was really waiting for this scene to be over. Of all the scenes in the movie, this was probably my least favorite watching it as an audience member. Now there's another moment that has kind of a comedic tone that I think works really well that is more elongated like this uh, Shakespearean soliloquy scene here. And that is on page 76. Okay, so here we have this gourmet restaurant scene. This scene is, in a sense, it's an expositional scene. He's talking about the enemy combatant here. Uh, we also talk about Guantanamo Bay, um, extreme rendition, sort of, sort of objective about whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then we have War Powers Act interpretation. So these are just like, a lot of these are big uh, ideas that happen in history and in different you know, law opinions and, and things that happen in legislation. And this, a lot of this isn't interesting to put on screen. And so what Adam McKay does is he has this fancy waiter tell Cheney, Rumsfeld, Woods, Addington, he's like explaining these things to them as if they are, you know, menu items. And I think that was a really fun way to do this and to do it well, because uh, it works and it's still sort of in the comedic tone of the film so you have these guys at this like fancy restaurant and they're like all these guys of power and then they're being told by this uh waiter who is like this fancy guy about these different menu items and it's sort of this joke within this film about power so it's this power joke within this film about power in this sort of setting that i think really works i think that makes it work a lot better than the shakespearean part uh, for those reasons. Another thing that Adam McKay does a lot in this script is the fishing motif. Uh, there's a lot of different moments where fishing is talked about, like right here, where he says, we find out what the fish wants, and in this case, it's a worm, and then we use it to catch them. So obviously there's parallels there. So is it a good trick we're playing? It's not good or bad, it's fishing. So this is kind of, uh, this sort of thing is, you know, obviously, talking about things that aren't about fishing, but then this sets up this fishing theme or fishing motif that goes throughout the script. So we have him fishing here, and then we have right here as he's talking to uh, George Bush, we have he's saying things, blah, 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 and they have changed fish land in a river. He watches the water with a patient focus. So it's sort of just paralleling what he's doing in fishing. And then we have uh, Satchel's open, revealing fly fish, lures, velocity of size. So this, as you can see, page 46, page 47, page 53. So this is all in the same conversation. And then fishing line going tight, right? This is all part of him winning this scene and, you know, continuing. And then page 74, when, the, so it shows the shadow of a horrible creature as Ch Cheney is fishing. And that is when he's talking about uh, terrorism and ISIS and about how they potentially created ISIS and this sort of thing. Uh, so 
that's that's a really cool element so i really like a lot of these elements that adam mckay adds to sort of spice up the narrative and adding these little like the fishing motif i think is cool and then he has the teacups stacking them up and eventually falling uh, there's also a moment where he shows a lion running after a gazelle these sort of little sprinkled in shots are really cool and i think nice added elements i think a lot of it really comes down to tone because this movie is about power i think they can be poorly done um, I, I i'm sure i could if i thought for a minute i could remember times where it was done poorly but i think with this script i think it really meshes well and i think it meshes so well because of adam mckay's style and setting up this idea that this is going to feel like a documentary in certain elements another cool thing is the game board pieces so another thing that adam mckay does to show where dick cheney had power is he goes through this scene of showing the people that were connected to dick cheney and were listening specifically to him and where they were in the white house and and in the pentagon and in congress and so it's a cool element to help explain these concepts to the audience i think that's something that adam mckay has done very well and that if you look at the big short or if you look at this film there are these complicated things that adam mckay is able to take a moment and explain it through a character or whatever to the audience and i think this is really cool because i think it allows people who don't understand these concepts to get a better understanding of what's going on when people say, you know, these people were in the Pentagon doing this or, or or this person was enacting these executive orders and that sort of thing. I think it's really, really good and helpful. I wanted to quickly talk about the mock ending that this script has, which I think is a, it's a cool thing right here. So we have, um, where is it? Okay, so we have this right here. So we have this sort of fake ending where it's like Lynn would publish several books in American history and then you know he's holding his newborn grower Dick had a choice between the presidency of the United States and his youngest daughter he chose his daughter and then we go through this and literally Adam McKay has credits roll in his movie on page 41 and then this phone ringing ends up uh interrupting it and then we're back into the movie I think this is a cool idea and I don't think this is like breaking rules or, or people being like whoa like I can't believe he did that. What a what a way to break the rules. I really think he's just um, following this style of he's giving the audience this feeling of, oh, wow, like, you know, this is nice. That's really cool. And then he flips it on them. And so instead of it's not really breaking rules as much as it is understanding where the audience is sort of emotionally in this part of the film and then flipping that on them to begin this next level of the film that that takes place from page 42 onwards so i think it's a really cool moment and i think um it's sort of a it, it's another like adam mckay little added extra thing that i really like and i really like his style so quickly i want to talk about just the structure of the script just as a written script uh, one of the things that i really really like about most of this script is that adam mckay does a good job of being very brief and straight to the point with his action lines. So one of the things I feel like I can do incorrectly and a lot of other bad writers do is that they load their action with so much that's going on in this scene. Or instead of just taking the scene and heavily summarizing the opening. See, I think one of the things that people do wrong is they try to put basically everything that happens in the scene in their first like three or four action lines. And instead, I think you should really focus on saying, okay, this action in a way is really like a shot that I'm looking at. So when I open this scene up, you know, really I all, all I need to say about the scene is this right here. You know, this is obviously your scene heading. And then when you move into action lines like this, you should do less of filling it with a full summary of what's going to happen or whatever and just focus on okay what am i seeing in this first shot because when when you go to this shot this is now this dialogue right here is on a different shot so you don't need to know all this information in the action line because we're moving through shots here and so instead of thinking about your action lines as ways to summarize what's happening in your scenes you use your action lines as a way to show what is happening when people aren't talking or what actions are obviously happening, hence 
action lines. That seems like a simple concept, but I think it's something to think about and to remember because it's something that I have done wrong multiple times before. And when you can just focus on making your action lines what you are actually looking at instead of filling it with all these character thoughts or trying to describe exactly the type of coat people are wearing. When you're able to do that, it helps your scenes move better and it helps your readers read your scenes not only faster, but they get a better understanding of what's going on because it helps them sort of piece together the shot by shot timeline rather than trying to write it like a novel and put all of this information into your action lines too quickly. And so I think a lot of the script reads very well because of this reason. Now, obviously we do have moments like this where we have longer action lines, but overall, especially when we're within scenes, he, they keep, he keeps it very, very short, right? So we have this, you know, just a line or two opening these scenes up and giving what we need quickly without adding all this unnecessary stuff. And when you're able to do that, you can run through your scenes quickly. And I think, it helps you understand what you really want in each shot, right? You're not necessarily thinking of every single thing that's sitting in this room. You should always be focused on, okay, what should the audience be seeing when I'm writing this action line? Because that really is what your script is supposed to be. So this is just another small note, but I really like how Adam McKay does this right here. So this is a phone call. And then we establish that Donald Rumsfeld is in the Pentagon here. And all Adam McKay does is same time, Cheney's on the phone in his study, cut back and forth. So instead of putting every single scene heading back and forth and all this stuff, he just does this simple one line of, this is an intercut phone conversation. And I think that's really clean and really simple if you have that in a script that you're writing to just focus on doing that right there. And in, instead of bogging down your reader with scene headings over every single piece of dialogue. And then there's something at the very end here that I thought was really interesting. So here we have this credits roll, and then we have that we're interrupted by our focus group, which is a scene that has happened multiple times in the film. And then we sort of have this kind of self-aware sort of the focus group is about the film kind of moment where the, something's been bothering me about this whole movie. I just figured it out. The whole thing is liberal, it's got a little bias. So, and then it sort of has this self-aware kind of moment. So this is just more of a commentary on what's happening, you know, currently in America. And I think it's an interesting thing to put in because I think um, this sort of conversation is one that is kind of the immediate reaction, I think, a lot of ways. And so I think by addressing that and by being aware of that, I think it can potentially shift the conversation about the movie a little bit. So I think that's interesting. And I really like the last line here with the Fast and Furious girl and talking about, you know, nobody really cares at the end of the day about any of this because, you know, we just want to like be entertained. I think, I, I just think it's a cool kind of end scene there to leave the audience with that last little piece. So overall, I really like the script. I think it's really hard a lot of times to fit somebody's entire life into a film like this and so for them to go from you know dick cheney at 21 to all through his vice presidency and all this sort of stuff i think it's really difficult to do and difficult to keep a good pace and i think one of the ways that they were able to do that was the splitting up the timeline and putting things in different spots and sort of giving this full overview of this person and so overall i think it was a fast-paced well-paced script uh i think it works I understand the message of the film. I understand what Adam McKay is trying to say. It's very clear. I enjoyed reading the script and I enjoyed the movie. It's an especially good script to study if you have a fairly complicated idea, especially spanning someone's entire life. Because I think Adam McKay is able to handle a few different complicated elements of writing a screenplay in the script and he does them very well. And so because of that, I think it's a good script to read for that reason. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Vice. Let me know what you think about Vice in the comments below. Next video, we're gonna be doing First Reform. So I have the PDF for that screenplay in the description below if you want to read that and then comment your thoughts on the next video when that video comes out. I'll see you guys later.